Today, we're gonna to look at how you run your business like a CEO. Are you a small business owner that's struggling to scale and you're looking for an easy way out? Well, today is your unlucky day. No shortcuts here. Today, we're gonna to go against the grain because most people go with the grain and most businesses fail, unfortunately. So let's do common sense because most people don't do common sense. And we're gonna look at the difference between a hobbyist, a freelancer, an entrepreneur, a small business owner, and a CEO, and what it means to be all of these things and why it makes sense for you to run your business like a business, imagine that, and be the CEO of your own business and how that will help you really scale without losing your sanity. But before we get on with the video, hit the like, click that subscribe button please, and smash. Feels so good to say that. Smash that notification bell. Let's get on with the video. Hit it. So I come across a lot of small business owners and I sit there and I ask them, how's business? And they say, don't get me started. It's overwhelming. I'm burning out. I don't have enough time in the day. I don't have enough hours. I don't have enough clients. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. And I've got too much of this. And I got too much of that. And any too much is of they've got and any not enough of they've also got. And then I say, all right, so what's your plan? Where's your strategy? And they say, don't have a plan. I started my business on my passion. You know, it's that's what you do and you have to grind and you have to sort of hustle and you know like all the other sort of amazing people out there tell me i have to hustle and i have to hope and i have to pray and one of these days my business is gonna succeed and scale and then i say well, okay so you know how, how big is your team and they say don't have a team doing it all by myself because you know i don't have enough money and then i say ha i was gonna ask you how much money you know what are your finances like don't know i you know, get my accountant to do that at the end of the year. And that's as much as I see about my budgets or finances. But I, what I'm doing is I'm sort of putting in the time and the effort and I'm grafting and I'm putting all of these things and I'm just going to get there and I'm going to go there and that's what I'm going to do. And I look at them and I say, unfortunately, you're living in business purgatory. Yeah. Business purgatory. How are you possibly, possibly going to scale? when you don't have the time of day to do anything. You've got what, 10, 15, 20, 100 clients, doesn't matter, it depends on the business. Let's say you've got 100 clients now and your diary is absolutely full. How are you expecting to scale that from 100 clients to 1,000 clients and have as much time? It's just not sustainable, it's not scalable. There's no way that you can create 10 more of you or make 10 more times the amount of time that you have in the day or in the week or in the month. It's just impossible. So something has to change and something has to give this particular way of doing things. You don't have a plan. You don't have a team. You don't know what your finances are. Don't know what all of these things. And if you haven't seen this video up here where I talk about the top reasons why your business will fail, I go through a number of these things where people are just taking things on their own, they're trying to do everything themselves, they don't have a strategy, they don't have a budget, they think that they're the only people that know what to do, they don't have systems, they don't have, the, the list is up here, I go through about 10, actually 11 of them, there's a bonus one at the end, so make sure you watch until the very end. You need to understand that running a business is not about grafting, that's Grafting is freelance. So let's let's start with the first one. A freelancer. A freelancer is a person who uses their expertise. And they trade their time for money. They say X number of hours, X number of days, X number of weeks, by project, by contract size, by whatever, and that's it. And once your time is up throughout the week or the year or the month, that's it. You can't do any more. It's not scalable beyond that. If you want to be a freelancer, fantastic but don't call it a business. The reason you got into business for in the first place is that you wanted to have flexibility and freedom and contribution and impact so that you can have freedom to do what you want and time freedom, financial freedom. And then yet, unfortunately, you find yourself doing the exact opposite. No time, no money, no freedom, no flexibility, no business, no life. A little bit of tough love here. I'm sorry, but I see this time and time again, and that's why it breaks my heart that most business owners fail at running a business. And what we wanna try and understand is the next step beyond that. So if you're a freelancer, that's fantastic. The next step after that is the hobbyist, where they're actually running a business, 
and trying to run a business around their passion because they're enjoying it, but they have no financial plan, they have no, got no strategy, they've got no direction, and they're sitting there not knowing how to sell it. And that person is running a hobby and it will always remain a hobby. The next step after that is you've got your entrepreneur and your small business owner. So as a business owner, you are somebody who owns a business and you run a business. And that's your day-to-day -day work of running a business. Say for example, you've got a bakery or you've got a web design agency, you've got something and you're running it day in, day out for a long extended period of time. That's what a business owner is. An entrepreneur is somebody who finds an innovative solution to satisfy a pain point or a need or a desire. And they sit there and they match the two together and they say, oh, here's a business idea. This is a need. This is my solution to that need. Let me build a business around it. And that's being entrepreneurial. That's what an entrepreneur does. And that's why you can have serial entrepreneurs who go on from one starting one business to another business to another business. The minute you settle into that business as an entrepreneur and you run it for the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years and that becomes your business and it's no longer an innovative solution, then you become a business owner. And there's nothing wrong with that. So those two are perfectly acceptable as long as you understand how to run a business as a business owner or how to start and grow and scale a business as an entrepreneur. So then we've got the CEO who comes in as either an employee in these businesses or you as the business owner or the entrepreneur run your business like a CEO, which is what I'm proposing here when you're starting up a small company and you're trying to scale it and you're trying to grow it. So what are the differences between how CEOs run a business and how you're running your business today? I touched a little bit upon the sort of the no strategy, the no plan, the no, all of these kind of things. So now let's break it down the other way around. The role of a CEO is very, very simply define and lay down a strategy and a vision and make sure that it happens. And then we've got subcategories to that, but that's essentially what it is. We've got a strategy and a vision and we define how it, wh what it is. We put our direction where we're going and we make sure that we get there. And a strategy is not a bunch of goals where you say, I want to make a million dollars or a million pounds in three years. That's not a strategy. That's, that's a goal. If you want to put down a strategy, you sit there and you navigate and map out a path to the overall vision that you've set and you're navigating and overcoming the obstacles and you're putting down that plan to say, this is how we're gonna get there. So once, you've, once we understand that the role of a CEO is to set the direction and the strategy and the vision for the company and make sure that you get there, then we've got different subcategories under that. We need to then, as a CEO of your business, you need to then understand how to communicate this strategy and vision. You need to be able to communicate it internally as you're building your team, which we'll talk about in a bit. And you also need to communicate it externally, whether it's to clients or other people that have an impact or are interested in your business. So being able to communicate that strategy and vision is also a crucial part of what a CEO does. Notice I haven't sat here and said, you need to be an expert in your field and you need to sit there and work inside your business and you need to be, you know, this is your genius zone and this is your whatever. Genius zone is great. That's how you start coming up as an entrepreneur with the solution. But when you start running the business, you need to understand, all right, so how do I make this happen? Now I've come up with my solution. How do I grow this so that it can get to as many people as possible so that I can impact positively as many people as possible? So as a CEO, your role is to understand how to communicate that strategy and vision, both internally and externally. And the next step for you to do is to build a team. You cannot deliver on the strategy and the vision of any business by yourself. It's just impossible, otherwise you will carry on being a freelancer. If you're going to scale this as a business, you need to have several people because simply the roles of each of these to be able to understand how to run a team, how to run a business, needs different people with different expertise and different specialities that one person doesn't have. Whether it's understanding finances and budgets, whether it's doing project management, whether it's being able to do sales, marketing, HR, 
all of these come later on and we're going to look at understanding where the, the team is, what it is going to look like today and what it's going to look like tomorrow and how do we deliver a team that understands and works within the culture that you also define, which is also another part of what the CEO does. So you communicated your strategy and vision, you're building a team to be able to deliver that strategy and vision, and you're ensuring and defining what the culture and the values of the business are going to be so that everyone inside that team that are growing are motivated enough and aligned to understand how to deliver that strategy and vision. And once you've done that, what also you need to be doing as a CEO of your business is you need to ensure that the strategy and the vision and the execution of the plan that you're doing is happening and is aligned to what you've defined. So ensuring that that execution is being delivered properly is also part of your role as a CEO. We've built a team, we've said what culture and values that the, the business is going to operate around and we've communicated to them how this is going to work and where we're heading as a direction and we're basically making sure that we put the right systems and measurements in place to ensure that we are executing according to that strategy and plan. And then the last thing that you need to be doing as a CEO is making sure that you've got enough cash in the bank to be able to make all of this happen and that's a topic for another video but ensuring that you've got enough cash flow all the time is important as you're building towards that vision and that's what a CEO of a business does and sits there and says here is my strategy here is my team here is how I'm going to communicate it here are the cultures and values here is how it's going to be executed here it's how I'm going to ensure that it gets executed and here is how I'm going to make sure that I've always got enough cash in the bank to make all of this happen so that we can get there. And that's the role of a CEO as part of your business. And what we're gonna be talking about in a future video is breaking all of these down in terms of leadership, in terms of psychology, in terms of um, product, in terms of marketing, in terms of sale, in terms of operations, and how you really run your business like a CEO. So there's a whole bunch of other brackets that we're gonna talk about in future videos, so please make sure that you like and subscribe. But that's the overall role, if you will, of what a CEO or a business owner you should be aiming to, to, to work towards so that you can enable yourself to have that breathing space and say to yourself, right, okay, I can grow this company now. I can actually, I've, I've got the capacity and the resources to grow this company and I've got these people to do these things for me so that we can get to where we want to get to. And that's the difference between a CEO, an entrepreneur, a small business owner, a freelancer, a hobbyist, and I hope that that makes sense and in future videos, we're going to break down running your business like a CEO in a much more detail. So please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Welcome to CEO Entrepreneur. You know, we wanted to call it CEO Entrepreneur, Small Business Owner, Hobbyist Freelancer, Purgatory Person Business. But the whole domain thing just didn't work. You know, HTTPS slash slash CEO entrepreneur, can't spell entrepreneur, small business owner, freelancer, hobbyist, in purgatory, dot com. Just, just didn't work. So, you know, we settled with CEO entrepreneur. But hey, whichever one of those you are, we're just happy you're here.